The images from which containers are built consist of two main parts. They're a file system with all the files that the application needs to run bundled up into an image. And then there's also a configuration which tells the container system how to run the image. And these are both described by code. There's a build process that takes the build code and uses the build code to generate an image, often from another image. And so we would start out with some base image and then build ourselves up to the final image. And each of these intermediate images is called a layer. And the code describes to the build system how to install software and add or remove directories and otherwise change the image so that it goes from being the base image to eventually becoming the final image that's going to be run as the container. We can take a look at this with software like Dive. So if we look at the images that are on this particular machine, there's a bunch of them. And one of them happens to be a web server called www. So we can take that image name here, which starts with C6, and we can say to Dive that we want to open up and examine that image. And this is a container image. It was created from a base image, so it is going to have these layers. When you start to open up the image with Dive, depending on the size and complexity of the image, it may take a while for it to open up the observation window. And the reason is, is it's going through the file system, parsing out all the directories that are inside, all the files that are inside those directories, and recursively working its way down so that it can layer by layer figure out how the changes were made. So on the left, we see a list of the layers and the instructions that caused that layer to change. Each time that the layer changes significantly, the build process stops, saves that image, and then that new image becomes the base image for the next instruction. So you end up with this stack of pancakes like layers that you see here. And notice that every time we go from one layer to the next, those instructions are having an impact on the file system on the right-hand side. So we go over here to the file system, we can go ahead and collapse these directories down and then go back over to the layers and watch what happens when to the file system as we run to the layers. So when we get down to say the copy file, you'll notice that the var directory gets changed. The source code is getting put into there. And then some different libraries are being installed, which is changing the user directory. And then we do uh, some more instructions and clone the application in and so on and so forth. If we go inspect the file system at this point, we can open up these different directories and what we'll find is that the source code for the application has been installed by this particular layer. So you can see that in the var WW Matilda directory, we now have the software for the application installed in here with all of its different PHP files and directories and so on. So everything that this application needs to run, including the actual application code itself, has been built into this file system. And this file system has been saved as a disk image, or we just call them images for short. And as you go through these different instructions, you'll notice that more and more of the image is built up until finally we get all the instructions in the build file run, and we have our container image at the very end. And so if we go look at the files at this point, we'll find that everything has been set up for the application to run and the container is ready to pass over to the container system to be executed. So what we learn is that the images themselves, except for the base image, are created 
from code. And in fact, the more and more we get into containers, we see that everything is expressed as a set of instructions, as a code file. So you end up with not only the code of the application, but then there's also a whole other code project that's used to build the images. So now we have two projects, and we'll find out later there's even going to be another project where we're going to store some code on how to run the containers with our orchestration engine. So in the next video, we'll take a closer look at the containers themselves and also at orchestration.